Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. So I know the question you are all asking. Why are we reviewing the mechanics for all the base classes, especially considering there are a bunch of videos that already do this? There are two answers to that question. The first answer is we are going to start a new video series on the channel ranking all 199 classes, subclasses, and prestige classes in the game. This is obviously a massive undertaking, but I think there are a lot of new players who would benefit from the dialogue that would hopefully come from that content. The second answer is also related to that new series. If we have to go over basic class mechanics while attempting to rank these classes, it will balloon the size of the video significantly. Therefore, I need an information repository that I can send people to so they can get up to speed on things like what Wild Shape is or how sneak attacks work. Unfortunately, there is no channel I am aware of that has a current video series walking through mechanics for all the classes. The vast majority of these videos were created over a year ago, and many things have changed in the game since that time. Consequently, to help ensure that new players are getting up-to-date information, I am going to do this myself. To be clear, I don't consider myself to be any sort of guru or maestro when it comes to Pathfinder mechanics. I absolutely welcome notes, helpful critiques, and differing perspectives in the comments. By no means have I done a full playthrough with all 25 classes, and I am sure that walking through their mechanics doesn't clue you in on what has been nerfed or is still flat out broken in the game. I will maintain a pin post at the top of the comments with information for each class that I feel helps flesh out or correct what's in this video. For each class, we will not only review the mechanics, but I'll also point out a couple of feats or mythic options that I believe tie in well with the class. I'll also give you one character playthrough option for each class. This will by no means be the end all be all for potential mythic combinations. I just want to point out a couple of options to help new players figure out what works best for them. We will not be reviewing the mechanics for all of the subclasses. Each subclass removes some level of functionality from the base class, and I feel it would be impossible to rank them without talking through that. So we'll review that information in the ranking video series. On that same note, this video is going to focus on the facts, and I will not be providing opinions on which mechanics I believe are strong or weak. Again, that is information we can go through during the ranking series. With all that being said, let's get started. Alchemists employ a vast array of spells, handmade potions, and bombs, which make them an absolute terror on the battlefield. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 6, and its casting attribute is Intelligence. Their arcane spells must be prepared in the spellbook prior to being used. Its class skills are Trickery, Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Perception, and Use Magic Device. The class comes with proficiencies in simple weapons, light armor, and bombs. Alchemists automatically get Bomb, which allows you to throw volatile chemical mixtures at a range of 30 feet towards your enemies. The amount of bombs you can use per day is equal to your Alchemist level plus your Intelligence modifier. The first type of bomb you get does 1d6 points of fire damage plus your Intelligence modifier, and this damage increases every other level by 1d6. Bombs are considered thrown splash weapons, which means you don't just hit the primary enemy, you also hit the other enemies around that target. Splash damage is always the minimum amount of damage your bombs can do. For example, at level 1, if you have an intelligence modifier of 4, then your bomb damage is 1d6 plus 4, and your minimum damage is 5, which is the amount of splash damage you would do at that time. Enemies can cut splash damage in half if they succeed at a reflex save, and the difficulty class for this is equal to 10 plus your alchemist level plus your intelligence modifier. The feat Ability Focus Bomb lets you increase the difficulty class of your bombs by 2. Extra bombs will increase how many bombs you receive per day by 4, and this feat can be taken multiple times. At level 2 and every other level, 
Alchemist can choose a discovery, and these also provide customization options for your bombs. You can focus on holy damage, knocking enemies prone, dispelling enemy buffs, throwing more than one bomb per round, and other potential variations. Alchemists also automatically get Mutagen, which provides a natural armor bonus to your armor class. It also provides an alchemical bonus to a selected physical ability score while applying a penalty to one of your mental ability scores. Keep in mind that alchemical bonuses are rare, so more than likely this will stack with the bonuses you already have. Discoveries will allow you to increase the potency of your mutagens or let you instead use cognitogens, which will increase your mental ability scores while applying a physical ability score penalty. It's worth pointing out another discovery called Infusion. Infusion will make alchemical extracts behave like spells of the same name when considering targets and range. Translation, spells that usually you can only cast on yourself can now be casted on party members. So for example, shield has a target range of personal, but after taking infusion, you will be able to cast it on other members of your team. Alchemist also automatically gained the Brew Potions feat, which allows you to create potions up to level 3 at camp, and they get the Throw Anything feat, which allows them to add their intelligence modifier to damage done with splash weapons, including any splash damage. I believe it's important to note when playing as an Alchemist, make sure you carefully read the feats you select. There are some feats that apply to archers or ranged weapons that do not apply to bombs. For example, you might see a green thumbs up telling you to take deadly aim, but that feat requires precise damage, and bombs do elemental damage. Consequently, enabling this will cause you to take an attack penalty with no buff to your damage. On the other hand, Rapid Shot does not have a damage requirement and will assist you in throwing more bombs. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic abilities Enduring Spells and Greater Enduring Spells will allow your buffs to last longer. Abundant Casting and its upgrades will increase the amount of castings you have of all your spells. The Mythic Feat Brew Potions will expand the list of potions you are able to create and improve critical will make your critical hits with bombs even more powerful. Lich is the only mythic path that specifically interacts with bombs. Negative Energy Mastery will allow bombs to deal an additional 1d6 negative energy damage plus 1 damage per mythic rank, and it will inflict a negative level on the target. Keep in mind that as a Lich, negative energy is added to the list of ascendant elements you can select to bypass enemy defenses. Also note there's another Lich power called Death of Elements, which converts all elemental damage into negative energy. So you can make your bombs do negative energy damage, give them additional damage that debuffs enemies, and make it so this damage cannot be resisted. The Trickster Mythic Path can also make use of the high skill rankings Alchemists should have due to their intelligence. A special note is Perception Rank 2, which will unlock a list of unique feats that make your critical hits significantly more frequent and powerful. Bombs can do critical hits, so this significantly helps Alchemists. Please note there is a lot of misinformation floating around that Mythic Trick Lord Nature Rank 3 will give you items from the prequel game Pathfinder Kingmaker. That game had a lot of items that were useful to Alchemists, but this information is false. Mythic Tricks will give you a lot of nice effects, but nothing that specifically relates to Alchemists the way Lich does. The Trickster Mythic Path combined with Alchemists is a great way to recreate Varric Tethris from the Dragon Age series, a crafty dwarf who utilizes traps, potions, and intricate mechanisms to deal with his foes. Arcanists seek to combine the science of arcane scholars with the natural might of innate casters. The class has a low base attack bonus, a max spell level of 10, and its casting attribute is intelligence. Its class skills are Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Religion, Lore Nature, and Use Magic Device. The class only comes with proficiency in simple weapons. Wearing armor can cause your spells to intermittently fail. Before digging into the mechanics, I think it's worth going over how Arcanists cast spells. The class is essentially a hybrid between wizards and sorcerers. At each spell level, Arcanists have slots that can be used to memorize spells, just like a wizard. 
Unlike Wizards, you do not have to predetermine how many castings of each spell you need. You only have to slot it once and that spell is available for however many castings you have at that spell level just like a sorcerer. So in this example, I have five level one spell slots. Once I slot my spells and rest to memorize them, you'll see that I have 10 castings of level one spells. I can use these castings in any way I choose, shield three times, magic armor a couple of times, whatever I prefer. If I wanna change what spells are available, then I can switch out the appropriate slots, rest again, and a new suite of spells will be unlocked for use. I know many people find this system confusing, so hopefully I have broken it down in a way that was easy to understand. Getting back to the mechanics, Arcanists automatically gain an Arcane Reservoir. This pool allows them to increase the caster level or difficulty class of their spells. The maximum amount of points this pool can hold is equal to 3 plus your Arcanist level. Every time you rest, the pool will regain points equal to 3 plus half your Arcanist level. Points from the previous day are wiped away. Arcanists also automatically gain consumed spells, which allows them to add more points into the Arcane Reservoir pool without resting. As a move action, you can expend an available spell slot to add points into your pool equal to the spell level of the slot that has been consumed. You can use this ability a number of times equal to your Charisma modifier. Points from your Arcane Reservoir can also be used to power Arcanist exploits. Every odd numbered level will allow you to select a new exploit. There's a wide variety of potential effects that are available, such as more fire abilities, increasing spell potency, or making it easier to consume spells. At level 11, you will gain access to an even more powerful list of potential exploits. Most exploits that target enemies will use your Charisma modifier to determine difficulty class and how much damage is dealt. At level 20, you gain Magical Supremacy, which allows Arcanists to cast spell slots using the Arcane Reservoir. The level of the spell you want to use dictates how many points are needed from the pool to cast it. Arcanists have access to cantrips, which are level zero arcane spells. Cantrips can be casted without consuming a spell slot, which means you can use them an infinite amount of times. The spell penetration and greater spell penetration feats will significantly help you punch through enemy magical defenses. Spell focus and greater spell focus will increase the difficulty class of your spells in a specific school of magic. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability full reservoir will allow you to regain your entire arcane reservoir after resting, reducing how often you need to consume spells. Abundant casting and its upgrades will increase the amount of castings you have of all your spells. Keep in mind, this will not increase the amount of spell slots that you have. So going back to our example, I only have five slots that can be used to memorize spells and abundant casting will not change that. It will only increase how many times you can cast those spells that have been slotted. The Mythic Feat Spell Penetration will add half your Mythic Rate to Castle Level checks made to overcome spell resistance. Expanded Arsenal will let you add all feet and Mythic Feats to another school of magic. Spell Focus will increase the difficulty class bonus from the Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus regular feats by one. Sorcerer's Reflex allows you to cast your first spell after initiative is rolled as a swift action, as long as it is spell level one or at least two levels lower than the maximum spell level you can cast. Arcanists can combine their spell books with the Lich Mythic Path, significantly accelerating your spell level progression. Also keep in mind, spells that are unique to the Lich spell book automatically bypass spell resistance. If you can stomach not punching through an enemy's spell resistance until Act 3, this saves you a couple of feats, and potentially a mythic feat as well. The Azada Mythic Path is also a strong choice due to the superpower Zippy Magic. This will cause all of your single target spells to hit two targets, while also causing them to do more damage. Favorable Magic will let you roll twice to overcome spell resistance and decrease how effectively enemies can limit your area of effect damage. I believe combining the Azada Mythic Path with the Arcanist class is a great way to play as Gandalf, who, despite being labeled as a wizard, is most certainly a sorcerer. This makes him a perfect choice for a class that is trying to combine the powers of both groups.
barbarians use their unchained rage to significantly boost their offensive and defensive capabilities. The class has a high base attack bonus and it is completely unable to cast spells. Its class skills are athletics, mobility, lower nature, perception, and persuasion. Barbarians come with proficiencies in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields except for tower shields. To select this class, you cannot have a lawful alignment. Barbarians automatically gain Rage, which can be activated as a free action. While in a Rage, your character will receive a bonus to melee attack and damage rolls, thrown weapon attack rolls, temporary hit points, and will saving throws. The bonus to your rolls and saving throws is plus 2 at level 1, but by level 20 this bonus will increase to plus 4. You can enter Rage for a number of rounds equal to 4 plus your constitution modifier. While in Rage, your character has a negative 2 penalty to armor class. At level 1, your character will become fatigued for 1 minute once the Rage status ends. However, at level 17 you get Tireless Rage, and this drawback is removed. You can also select the extra Rage feat, which provides you with additional rounds of Rage every day. At level 14, Barbarians gain Indomitable Will, providing a plus 4 bonus to Will saving throws against enchantment effects. This bonus stacks with the bonus you already Already receive from entering a rage. Starting at level 2 and every other level thereafter, barbarians can choose a rage power. Rage powers are additional buffs or effects that only activate while your character is in a rage. Many of the options here are mutually exclusive, which creates a lot of variety in what type of barbarian you build. For example, you can go down the lethal stance line of powers and gain significantly augmented criticals, or choose the reckless stance path and augment attack rolls for yourself and the entire party. You cannot run both of these stances at the same time. The extra rage power feat allows you to take additional rage powers. At level 2, barbarians gain uncanny dodge, which ensures they keep their dexterity bonus to armor class unless they have been completely immobilized or an enemy uses the faint action against them. At level 5, they also gain improved uncanny dodge, which prevents barbarians from being flanked. Barbarians also automatically gain fast movement, which ensures that they are not encumbered or wearing heavy armor, they will get an increase of 10 feet to their land speed. At level 3 and every 3 levels thereafter, Barbarians will pick up Danger Sense. This ability provides a plus 1 bonus to reflex saving throws when avoiding traps, and a plus 1 bonus to armor class against attacks from traps. Starting at level 7 and every 3 levels afterwards, Barbarians gain a plus 1 bonus to damage reduction, which will reduce the damage they take from weapons or natural attacks. Finally, let's go over some mythic options for Barbarians. The mythic ability Limitless Rage allows you to use Barbarian Rage for an infinite number of rounds. Please note it has no effect on Demonic Rage. Brutality Incarnate makes your natural attacks ignore most forms of damage reduction. The Trickster Mythic Path can provide unique feats that make your critical hits significantly more powerful and these effects stack with the Lethal Stance Tree of Rage powers. Demonic Rage from the Demon Mythic Path stacks with Barbarian Rage. In addition, Demon provides your character with a plus 2 enhancement bonus to natural attacks and the spell Demonic Form 4 will let you morph into a Kalavakas who uses natural attacks while providing a polymorph bonus to your character. Close to the Abyss will give you a Gore attack. All of this stacks very nicely with the Beast Totem line of Rage powers. This mythic path opens up options like playing as Sir Gregor Clegane, aka the Mountain, a massive barbarian beast of a man feared for both his unbelievable strength and his propensity for senseless violence. Bards perform musical masterpieces that inspire allies and demoralize enemies. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 6, and its casting attribute is Charisma. Bards can cast their arcane spells spontaneously, which means their spells do not have to be prepared in the spell book prior to use. All of the skills in the game are class skills for this class. Bards come with proficiency in simple weapons, light armor, and shields, except for tower shields. A bard can cast spells from its spell book while wearing light armor and or holding a shield. Medium and heavy armor will still cause your bard spells to fail, and if you multi-class, then arcane spells from another class will have the usual failure chance, 
even if you're wearing light armor. Bards automatically gain bardic performance, which allows them to sing a variety of songs that empower allies or weaken enemies. Most of these songs require your allies or enemies to be within 30 feet and able to actually hear or perceive the performance. Any songs that require enemies to pass a save will have a difficulty class of 10 plus half your bard level plus your charisma modifier. Bards automatically gain the ability to sing Inspire Courage, which provides a plus one morale bonus on saving throws against charm and fear effects, along with a plus one competence bonus on attack and damage rolls. These bonuses steadily increase to plus four at level 17. At level 3, Bards can sing Inspire Competence, which provides allies with a plus 2 competence bonus on all skill checks. This bonus steadily increases to plus 6 at level 19. At level 6, the Fascinate Song forces enemies to pass a will saving throw. Enemies who fail the save stand quietly and observe the performance as long as they don't take damage. At level 8, Dirge of Doom causes enemies to become shaken. At level 9, Inspired Greatness provides allies with two bonus d10 hit point dice, a commensurate number of temporary hit points, a plus 2 competence bonus to attack rolls, and a plus one competence bonus on fortitude saving throws. At level 12, soothing performance allows bards to activate mass cure wounds, using the bard's level as the caster level. This will also remove fatigued, sickened, and shaken status effects from allies. At level 14, Frightening Tomb forces enemies to pass a will save or become frightened and flee allies. At level 15, Inspiring Heroics provides allies with a plus four morale bonus on saving throws and a plus four dodge bonus to armor class. At level 20, Bards gain their final song, Deadly Performance, which can force one enemy to pass a will save. Enemies that succeed are staggered for 1d4 rounds or if they fail the save, they die. At level 7, bardic performances can be started with a move action instead of a standard action, and at level 13, they can be started with a swift action. The lingering performance feat allows your song buffs and debuffs to continue for two rounds after you stop performing. The extra performance feat allows you to sing for an additional six rounds per day, and you can take this feat repeatedly. At level 1, bards get bardic knowledge, which allows them to add half their class level to all knowledge and lore skill checks and allows them to attempt those checks even if they are untrained. In Pathfinder, to attempt a knowledge or lore check, you have to be trained or rather have at least one rank in the skill. This ability bypasses that need. At level 5, bards get Lore Master, which allows them to take 10 on all knowledge and lore skill checks that they have ranks in. They still have the option to roll normally if a check requires a higher roll. At level 10, bards gain a plus 1 bonus on all skill checks. At level 2 and every 4 levels afterwards, bards can choose from a list of bard talents, which is basically a condensed list of rogue talents. There are a wide variety of talents to choose from, such as combat feat, which allows you to take an additional feat or improved evasion, which will let you take no damage on a successful reflex saving throw. At level 2, bards gain a plus 4 bonus on saving throws against rival bard songs and sonic effects. Bards have access to cantrips, which are level 0 arcane spells. Cantrips can be casted without consuming a spell slot, which means you can use them an infinite amount of time. Finally, let's review some mythic options for this class. Trickster complements the bard very nicely, since it allows you to make use of all the class skills. While some mythic tricks don't actually require you to have high rankings in the skill, others such as Persuasion Rank 2 strongly benefit from your character being highly skilled in a particular area. Obviously, Bard has strong synergy with the Zada, which provides several additional songs you could potentially utilize in combat. The superpower All Skilled perfectly complements the Bard's focus on skill checks. Azada also provides access to strong enchantment spells like Insanity and Hold Person Mass, which complement the Bard's spellbook. This path and class combination provides options like playing as Dandelion, the Poet, Minstrel, Bard, and close friend of Geralt of Rivia. Blood Ragers combine savage rage with the limitless power coursing through their veins. The class has a high base attack bonus, a max spell level of 4, and its casting attribute is Charisma. Blood Ragers can cast arcane spells spontaneously, which means their spells do not have to be prepared in the spellbook 
prior to use. They start gaining spells at character level 4. The class skills are Athletics, Mobility, Knowledge Arcana, Lore Nature, Perception, and Persuasion. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields except for tower shields. A Blood Ranger can cast spells from his spellbook while wearing light armor and medium armor. Heavy armor and or holding a shield will cause intermittent spell failure. If you multi-class, arcane spells from other spellbooks will still fail when wearing armor. Blood Rages automatically gain Blood Rage, which gives you a plus two bonus to melee attack and damage rolls, thrown weapon damage rolls, will saving throws, and you get temporary hit points. While in Rage, characters take a negative two penalty to armor class, and you will become fatigued for one minute when Blood Rage ends. Blood Rages can stay in Rage for a number of rounds per day, equal to four plus their constitution modifier. The extra Blood Rage feat provides an additional six rounds of Blood Rage per day, and it can be taken multiple times. At level 11, Greater Blood Rage increases the Blood Rage bonuses to plus 3 and allows the Blood Rager to cast spells that are level 2 or lower as a swift action upon entering a Blood Rage. These spells must have a range of Self or Touch. At level 14, Blood Rages gain a plus 4 bonus to will saving throws when resisting enchantment effects. At level 17, Blood Rages no longer become fatigued when a Blood Rage ends. Finally, at level 20, Mighty Blood Rage increases the Blood Rage bonuses to plus 4 and lets you cast spells of all levels as a swift action when entering a Blood Rage. Blood Rages also automatically get access to Bloodlines. Each Bloodline provides a different list of unique abilities and bonus spells at level 7, 10, 13, and 16. In addition, at level 6 and every 3 levels afterwards, you will be able to pick from a list of bonus feats. There's a lot of great options to choose from, so we will only briefly go over two of them. At level 1, the Arcane Bloodline provides Disruptive Blood Rage, which gives enemies within 10 feet of you a negative 2 penalty to concentration checks. At level 4, Arcane Blood Rage ensures when entering a Blood Rage, you can apply one spell to yourself. Blur, protection from arrows, or resist energy of one elemental type. At level 8, you can also choose to apply displacement or haste when entering a rage, and this will stack with arcane blood rage. At level 12, enemy casters within 10 feet of you have to make a concentration check to cast spells. The difficulty class for that check is set to 15 plus double the spell level. You do not have to be in rage to activate this ability. At level 16, you can choose to apply beast shape 4. Form of the Dragon 1 or Transformation when entering a Rage and it will stack with your other powers. At level 20, spellcasters within 10 feet automatically fail attempts at casting defensively. At level 1, the Serpentine Bloodline gives you a bite attack that deals 1d8 damage and forces enemies to pass a fortitude saving throw. The difficulty class is 10 plus half your Blood Rager level plus your constitution modifier and enemies that fail are inflicted with poison that deals 1 constitution damage per round for 4 rounds. At level 8 this increases to 1d2 constitution damage for 5 rounds. At level 16 this increases to 1d4 constitution damage for 6 rounds and enemies must pass 2 saves to end the effect. At level 8 three times per day, you can activate a glare as a swift action that forces enemies to pass a will saving throw. The difficulty class is 10 plus half your blood rage's level plus your charisma modifier and enemies that fail this are dazed. At level 12, your reach increases by five feet during a blood rage. At level 16, you can turn into a hydra as a free action, gaining increases to your strength, constitution, and armor class along with an immunity to trip. You will also gain 5 bite attacks that can inflict your serpentine poison. At level 4 and every 4 levels thereafter, you'll gain natural armor bonuses to armor class and saving throw bonuses to poison. At level 20, you become immune to poison, you cannot be called flat footed, and you do not provoke attacks of opportunity. Moving on from Bloodlines, at level 2, Blood Rages get Uncanny Dodge, which ensures they keep their Dexterity bonus to armor class unless they have been completely immobilized or an enemy uses the faint action against them. At level 5, they also gain Improved Uncanny Dodge, which prevents Blood Rages from being flanked. 
At level 3, Blood Rages gain a plus 2 bonus on saving throws against spells that either they or their allies cast. Starting at level 7 and every 3 levels afterwards, Blood Rages gain a plus 1 bonus to damage reduction, which will reduce the damage they take from weapons or natural attacks. Blood Rages automatically gain fast movement, which ensures that they are not encumbered or wearing heavy armor, they will get an increase of 10 feet to their land speed. Finally, let's review some mythic options for this class. Even though the mythic ability Limitless Rage only mentions rage, it actually also counts for Blood Rage and allows you to stay enraged infinitely. Second Blood Rage of Bloodline allows you to select an additional bloodline and gain all of its benefits. Demonic Rage from the Demon Mythic Path stacks with Blood Rage. Fear Control from the Lich Mythic Path provides a plus 4 profane bonus to attack and a plus 1 profane bonus per mythic level to damage against frightened creatures, while also giving you a 10 foot aura that forces enemies to pass a will saving throw or become shaken until the end of combat. All of this lines up very nicely with the Undead Bloodline. While they do not directly interact with each other, I believe the Aeon Mythic Path is a great fit with the Arcane Bloodline. Aeon's focus on disrupting or ending illusion magical effects fits like a glove on a lawful Arcane Blood Rager who is constantly making life hell for enemy spellcasters. Alternatively, you could take the Infernal Bloodline and switch over to the Devil Mythic Path late game, allowing you to keep many of your Aeon abilities and get Demonic Rage at Mythic level 10. This meshes well with a playthrough as Victor Creed, aka Sabretooth, a megalomaniac who oftentimes uses his analytical mind, terrifying rage, and the awesome power of his mutant blood to navigate himself into roles where he can legally engage in barbaric levels of bloodshed. Cavaliers utilize animal companions in mounted combat as both tanks and dangerous combatants. The class has a high base attack bonus and is completely unable to cast spells. Its class skills are athletics, mobility, and persuasion. Cavaliers come with proficiencies in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, and shields except for tower shields. Cavaliers automatically gain access to a mount, which must be a horse. You will be able to mount this horse and use it in combat. While mounted, attacks will target your horse's armor class, allowing your character to focus on developing offensive capabilities. Abilities with an area of effect can still damage you. There are several feats that tie in directly with mounted combat. Mounted combat allows you to attempt a mobility check to negate a hit against your mount once per round. Indomitable mount allows you to attempt a mobility check to negate a failed save by your mount once per round. Mounted shield allows you to add your base shield bonus to your mount's armor class. Spirited charge allows you, when mounted and charging, to deal double damage with melee weapons. Trample allows you to attempt the trample combat maneuver, which if successful, knocks the target prone and deals damage equal to one natural attack by your mount. At level 3, you'll gain Cavalier's Charge, which provides a plus 4 bonus on attack rolls for charges while mounted and removes the armor class penalty after making a charge. At level 11, you double the threat range of weapons while mounted and charging. This does not stack with other effects that increase your threat range. The Cavalier also makes a free trip or bull rush combat maneuver when a charge attack is successful. At level 20, a Cavalier's Charge attacks while mounted deal double damage or triple if using a long spear. While the tooltip says lances, they do not actually exist in the game as a weapon group. If you can confirm a critical hit on a charge while mounted, the target will be stunned for 1d4 rounds, or if it can pass a will saving throw, the enemy will be staggered for 1d4 rounds. The difficulty class is equal to 10, plus the Cavalier's base attack bonus. Cavaliers also automatically get Tactician, which allows them, as a standard action, to apply a teamwork feat to all allies within 30 feet. Teamwork feats have effects that require at least two people with the feat to be in close proximity. At first you can only use this once, however, by level 20 you can use this ability five times. At level 9 you can use Tactician as a swift action. This class gets free teamwork feats at level 1, 9, and 17. You can also select from a list of bonus feats at level 6, 12, and 18. At level 1, Cavaliers, as a swift action, can challenge an enemy. 
This allows you to deal extra melee damage equal to your level against that enemy. The challenge remains in effect until the enemy is dead or unconscious and you take a negative two armor class penalty except for attacks made by the target of your challenge. This can be done once per day. However, the amount of times you can activate this steadily increases until you have seven uses at level 19. At level 12, if the target of your challenge is being threatened by you, then it will take a negative two armor class penalty from attacks made by anyone other than you. At level 3, Cavaliers gain a Banner, which provides all allies within 60 feet, a plus 2 morale bonus on saving throws against fear, and a plus 1 morale bonus on attack rolls made as part of a charge. These bonuses increase to plus 4 by level 20. Starting at level 14, the Banner also provides a plus 2 morale bonus on saving throws against charm and compulsion spells and effects. On top of all of this, Cavaliers give mechanics based on what order they pledge themselves to. There are five different options and they all have different mechanics, but we'll only review one of them. At level 1, the Order of the Cockatrice provides a plus 1 morale bonus on all melee damage rolls made against the target of a challenge as long as you are the only creature threatening the target. This bonus increases by 1 every 4 Cavalier levels. At level 2, you'll automatically pick up Dazzling Display as a bonus feat and receive a plus 2 morale bonus on melee attack rolls against targets under fear effects. At level 8, whenever a party member scores a critical hit against an enemy you are threatening, you can make an attack of opportunity against that target. Finally, at level 15, as a free action for one round, the Cavalier can receive a competence bonus equal to your charisma modifier on all ability checks, attack rolls, damage rolls, saving throws, skill checks, and armor class. In addition, all critical hits are automatically confirmed. This ability can only be used once per day. Finally, let's review some mythic options for this class. The mythic ability Mythical Beast provides a strength, dexterity, and constitution bonus to your mount equal to your mythic rank. It also makes their attacks ignore most forms of damage reduction and makes them count as ghost touch weapons. Mythic Charge allows your charge attacks to deal additional divine damage equal to 1d6 per mythic rank. Since many of the Cavalier's mechanics revolve around attacks of opportunity, I think it's also worth mentioning Ever Ready, which will provide you with more attacks of opportunity per round while also giving you an attack and damage bonus that will help make those opportunities count. The Azada Mythic Path Superpower Incredible Might provides a morale bonus to attack and damage rolls that becomes larger than what you can get using the Heroism spell. More importantly, when connecting with a charge attack, you force enemies to pass a fortitude saving throw or they will become stunned, prone, pushed away and stunned, crippled with a penalty to attack rolls in armor class, exhausted, or flat out killed instantly. You can also take supersonic speed, which halves the damage your character takes from area attacks while also giving you haste and a missed chance for any melee, ranged, or magic attacks against you. The Lich Mythic Path Power Death Rush allows you to deal an additional 1d6 points of damage per Mythic rank anytime you successfully charge or use a combat maneuver. Also, the Undead Mount Power grants your animal companion all undead traits as well as additional damage reduction and spell resistance. Using this path with Cavalier opens up the option to play as the Witch King of Agmar, a legendary villain from the Lord of the Rings series. A link for my build of this character is below in the description. Clerics are mortals whose devotion to something greater than themselves unlocks incredible power. On that same token, you must have a deity to choose this class, therefore, you cannot be an atheist. It has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 10, and its casting attribute is Wisdom. The divine spells must be prepared in the spell book prior to being used. Its class skills are Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Religion, and Persuasion. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields except for tower shields. Clerics are proficient with the favored weapons of their deities. Clerics automatically get the ability to channel energy. This allows you, as a standard action, to release a 30-foot burst that either damages or heals creatures depending on if they are living or dead. Your deity choice will help determine if you channel negative or positive energy. The amount of damage dealt or healed is equal to 1d6 points of damage plus an extra 1d6 points for every two cleric levels beyond the first. Creatures harmed by this effect can make a will saving throw to half the damage. 
difficulty class 10, plus half the cleric's level, plus the cleric's charisma modifier. This ability can be used a number of times per day, equal to three plus your charisma modifier. The selected channel feat helps to ensure you do not accidentally heal enemies or damage your allies with this ability. The extra channel feat allows you to channel energy two additional times per day. All other cleric functionality is tied to their domains, which come from your chosen deity. As you can see, there's a long list of deities, and all of them are tied to at least four domains. No two deities have the exact same list of domains, so there's a ton of flexibility here. Each deity has specific alignment requirements, which limit your ability to combine them with certain classes. Each deity also has a favored weapon that your cleric will automatically become proficient with. Once your deity has been selected, you can choose a domain. Most domains will give you one special ability at level 1, and then a more powerful ability at a later level. There are also domain spells that will be added into the cleric spellbook. There are way too many domains to cover them all here, but I will walk through a couple of popular options. By far the most popular deity is Aristil, due to the domains Animal and Community. The Animal Domain adds Lord Nature as a class skill and several animal related spells like Magic Fang, Dominate Animal, and Beast Shape 3. The real draw of this domain is that it provides a pet starting at level 4. This option lets you select from a full list of pets in the game. The pet will be 4 levels below your character, but this can be fixed with the Boon Companion feat, which gives your pet an extra 4 levels. The Community Domain gives your cleric additional spells that serve as powerful heals or buffs like Legendary Proportions, Soul Skin Communal, and Mass Heal. At level 1 you gain Calming Touch, which allows you to, as a standard action, Heal a creature within touch range for 1d6 points of damage plus 1 per your cleric level. The touch removes fatigue, shaken, and sicking conditions. You can use this ability a number of times per day equal to 3 plus your wisdom modifier. The real draw of this domain comes at level 8, which provides you with guarded hearth. As a full round action, all friendly creatures within a ward receive a resistance bonus equal to your wisdom modifier on all saving throws and an equal competence bonus on attack rolls. The ward lasts for one hour per level in this class and it can only be casted once per day. This ability used to provide a sacred bonus but it was recently nerfed. Despite that, it's still hands down one of the best buffs in the entire game. Under the Lamashtu deity, we can select the domain Madness. Madness provides spells like Cause Fear, Confusion, and Insanity. The real draw of the domain comes right off the bat, Vision of Madness. As a melee touch attack, you can give a target a bonus to attack rolls, saving throws, or skill checks equal to half your cleric level. This will also give an equal penalty to the other two categories you didn't choose. Using this ability, you could buff an enemy's skill checks while causing their attack rolls and saving throws to plummet, or you can skyrocket an ally's attack rolls in preparation for facing a well-protected opponent. This effect lasts for three rounds and can be used a number of times per day equal to three plus your wisdom modifier. At level eight, you gain Aura of Madness, allowing you to emit a 30-foot aura that forces enemies to pass a will saving throw or become confused. The difficulty class is 10, plus half your cleric level, plus your wisdom modifier. This lasts for a number of rounds per day, equal to your cleric level, and the confusion effect ends once a creature leaves the aura or the aura ends. Finally, let's talk about some mythic options. The mythic ability Boundless Healing increases the range of your healing spells and the amount of damage that you can heal with them. Domain Zealot lets you use domain abilities such as Guarded Hearth and Vision of Madness as a swift action instead of a standard action. Impossible Domain allows you to add an additional domain even if it's not listed for your deity. The Mythic Feat Mythic Channeling will allow your channeled energy to deal additional damage or provide additional healing equal to twice your Charisma modifier. If you don't care about combining spellbooks, I think Lich is a strong choice for an evil cleric. The reason for this is the Lich doesn't get any good healers as undead party members, and trying to make your skeletal champion a healer makes it terrible at just about everything else. You also are never able to pick up some of the really useful cleric spells like Greater Restoration. This forces you to use valuable spell slots on healing spells for the party. An evil cleric will find it easier to bypass this issue, converting lower level spells spells into healing while channeling powerful negative energy. Dance Macabre will also assist with this, allowing the cleric to channel energy more often. 
the Angel Mythic Path spellbook can be combined with the Cleric spellbook to significantly accelerate your spell progression. This path also increases the amount of healing your Cleric is capable of, and you'll get access to the Angel's insane defensive buffs. In addition, you'll get Bolt of Justice, which shines holy light from above that is more devastating when used on the most powerful enemies. A hero who believes in ideals and a cause greater than himself and fights using the power of that belief sounds like Jon Stewart, aka Green Lantern, in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape his sight. Druids, utilize a potent spellbook, powerful polymorph abilities, and a lethal animal pet. They cannot choose the chaotic good or chaotic evil alignment. If they drift into one of those alignments, they lose access to their spells and class features. They are also not able to advance in level until the alignment is correct once again. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 10, and its casting attribute is Wisdom. Its divine spells must be prepared in a spellbook prior to being used. Its class skills are Athletics, Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, and Perception. They are proficient with clubs, daggers, darts, quarterstaffs, scimitars, scythes, sickles, short spears, slings, and spears. They are also proficient with the natural attacks of any animal form they take, light armor, medium armor, and shields except for tower shields. Armor the druid uses cannot be metal and the shields must be wooden. Druids automatically gain Nature's Bond. This allows them to choose from a limited list of cleric domains. Each domain will add new spells to the Druid spellbook along with one or two new abilities. Alternatively, you can choose to have an animal companion. Druids can choose from the full list of potential animal companions. Your pets will increase in level as the Druid advances in their levels. Starting at level 4, Druids gain Wild Shape, which lets you polymorph into a different creature. This is a standard action, and the change lasts for one hour. The shape will provide a polymorph buff to your character that changes depending on what shape you take. At level 4, you can turn into a wolf, but as you level up, the options expand to leopards, bears, and even elementals. Spells cannot be cast in this form unless you have the natural spell feat, which allows you to regain that functionality. Druids automatically gain the ability to convert all spells into summoning spells of the same level. They also gain a plus two bonus on Lord Nature checks, and then at level two, they can ignore all difficult terrain. At level four, they gain a plus four bonus on saving throws against the spell-like and supernatural abilities of Fey and Plants. At ninth level, you become immune to poison. Finally, let's talk about some mythic options. The mythic ability Brutality Incarnate makes your natural attacks ignore most forms of damage reduction. Master Shapeshifter adds plus four to the bonuses you receive while polymorphed. Mythical Beast adds a bonus equal to your mythic rank to the strength, dexterity, and constitution scores of your pet. The Angel Mythic Path spellbook can be combined with the Druid spellbook to significantly accelerate your spell progression while providing a fantastic suite of buffs and damaging spells. The Azada Mythic Path's focus on nature and purifying the blighted landscape meshes perfectly with Druid. I find it difficult to imagine a better playthrough for this combo than Swamp Thing, a humanoid plant elemental creature who fights to protect his swamp, the environment, and humanity. Fighters are armor and weapon masters, using an insane number of abilities to wreak havoc on a battlefield. The class has a high base attack bonus and is completely unable to cast spells. His class skills are Athletics, Knowledge World, Lore, Nature, and Persuasion. Fighters come with proficiencies in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, shields, and tower shields. At level 1 and every even numbered level after that, fighters can select a bonus combat feat from a list of feats focused on your martial prowess. Starting at level 2, fighters gain a plus 1 bonus on will saves against fear and and this bonus increases every four levels. Starting at level three, fighters reduce their armor check penalty by one and increase the dexterity bonus armor allows by one. Heavier armor usually has a low maximum dexterity bonus, so this ability lets you make greater use of a higher dexterity score. Armor check penalties impact skill checks such as athletics. The bonuses increase to negative four and plus four respectively as you level up. At level 19, the fighter gains damage reduction five flat when wearing armor or using a shield. At level five and every four levels afterwards, a fighter is able to take a plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls for a particular type 
type of weapon. These bonuses also apply to combat maneuver checks made with the weapon, and they increase by plus one every time the fighter chooses another weapon to train in. Please note that if you take weapon training in two groups that overlap, they will not stack. The higher bonus will take precedent. There are also non-weapon options in this list, such as effortless dual wielding, which allows the fighter to treat all one-handed weapons as though they were light weapons when determining what penalties are taken when fighting with two of them. At level 20, the fighter gains weapon mastery, which ensures that for one weapon type, all critical threats are automatically confirmed and their damage multipliers increase by one. In Pathfinder, if you have a dice roll that lands in your critical threat range, which for most weapons is a roll between 18 and 20, then you have the potential to land a critical hit. You then have to roll again to actually confirm the critical threat so that your character will land a critical hit. Weapon Mastery removes the need for that additional dice roll and also increases the damage you do on your crits. In addition, the fighter cannot be disarmed while holding the weapon chosen with this ability. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The Trickster Mythic Path has a mythic trick called Perception Rank 2 that unlocks a special list of feats for your entire team. Three of these feats expand your critical threat range and increase the damage your criticals can do. Usually it's a sacrifice to take this route because three feats is a big ask for any build, but fighter gets so many extra feats that you can take them with no problem and it makes just about any fighter build significantly better. Legend will allow you to stack another 20 class levels on top of a max level fighter. I like the idea of taking this path with 20 levels of fighter and invulnerable rager to play as Luke Cage, aka Power Man. Luke possesses superhuman strength, unbreakable skin, and he leads the legendary supergroup Heroes for Hire. Hunters form close bonds with animal companions and use spells to empower both themselves and their pets. The class has an average base attack bonus of max spell level of six, and its casting attribute is wisdom. Hunters can cast spells spontaneously, which means that spells do not have to be prepared in the spell book prior to use. Its class skills are athletics, stealth, knowledge world, lord nature, perception, and persuasion. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields except for tower shields. Hunters automatically get to choose an animal companion from a full list of potential pets. The pets will increase in level as the hunter advances in their levels. You will also gain animal focus, which allows hunters to apply one animal aspect onto their pet. Aspects have a variety of possible effects, such as a plus two enhancement bonus to constitution, gaining evasion, and later improved evasion or increasing their foot speed. The aspects last until the hunter changes it or the companion dies. The hunter can place an animal aspect on themselves as a swift action. The ability can be used for a number of minutes per day equal to the hunter's level. Starting at level eight, the hunter can use two different animal aspects on themselves or on their animal companion. At level 20, hunters can receive the animal focus benefit any number of times per day. At level three, the hunter automatically grants all of their teamwork feats to the animal companion. Teamwork feats have effects that require at least two people with the feat to be in close proximity. Hunters get free teamwork feats at level three and every three levels afterwards. At level 10, they will gain raise animal companion as a spell like ability. And at level 16, this spell will act like resurrection instead of raise dead. At level 17, the hunter and their pet can attempt to demoralize all enemies in a 30 foot radius as a swift action. Animals who are demoralized will become shaken and have a negative two penalty on multiple stats, including attack rolls. Hunters automatically gain a plus two bonus on Lord Nature checks. At level two, they are able to select either precise shot or outflank as a bonus feat. They also can ignore difficult terrain. Finally, let's talk about some mythic options. The mythic ability, Mythical Beast, adds a bonus equal to your mythic rank to the strength, dexterity, and constitution scores of your pet. The Azada Mythic Path Superpower Life Bonding Friendship allows you to choose more teamwork feats and shares their effects with all allies within 50 feet. It will also allow allies to keep fighting even when they have lost enough health that they should be unconscious. Swarm That Walks will provide clones that are 
literally copies of your entire build and you'll gain extremely powerful swarm attacks. The path lines up perfectly with a playthrough as Sarah Kerrigan from the StarCraft series. Originally a sniper fighting to save humanity, she is captured by the Zerg Swarm, infected, and morphed into the Queen of Blades. Inquisitors are mortal weapons wielded by deities to exact divine retribution. On that same token, you must have a deity to choose this class, therefore you cannot be an atheist. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 6, and its casting attribute is Wisdom. Inquisitors can cast spells spontaneously, which means their spells do not have to be prepared in the spell book prior to use. All skills are class skills for the Inquisitor. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, long bows, short bows, light armor, medium armor, and shields except for tower shields. They are also proficient in their deity's favorite weapon. Inquisitors automatically gain the Judgment ability, which they can use as a swift action. There are seven different types of judgments that you can use for different situations, such as Destruction, which gives you a plus one sacred bonus on damage rolls. This bonus increases as you level up, and sacred bonuses are rare, so more than likely this will stack with other bonuses you have. At level 8, you are able to activate two judgments at once, and with another swift action, you can change which judgments are activated. At level 16, you can activate three judgments at once. At level 20, Inquisitors get access to True Judgment, which forces an enemy to pass a Fortitude saving throw or die. The difficulty class equals 10, plus half the Inquisitor's level, plus your Wisdom modifier. At 5th level, Inquisitors can imbue their weapon with the Bane special ability as a swift action. Against a designated foe, this will give your weapon a plus 2 enhancement bonus and an extra 2d6 points of damage against those foes. At level 12, the bonus damage increases to 4d6. The ability lasts a number of rounds per day equal to your Inquisitor level. The extra Bane weapons feat provides an additional 3 rounds per day that you can use Bane. At level 3 and every 3 levels afterwards, Inquisitors get free teamwork feats. Teamwork feats have effects that require at least two people with the feet to be in close proximity. Inquisitors have access to Orisons, which are level 0 divine spells. Orisons can be casted without consuming a spell slot, which means you can use them an infinite amount of times. Inquisitors also gain a morale bonus on all perception checks and persuasion skill checks made for intimidation equal to half their Inquisitor level. Starting at level 2, Inquisitors can add their Wisdom modifier to initiative checks in addition to their Dexterity modifier. At third level, all of the Inquisitors' allies are treated as if they possess the same teamwork feats for the purpose of determining whether the Inquisitor receives a bonus for their teamwork feats. At level 11, when the Inquisitor makes a Fortitude or Will saving throw against an attack that has damage on a successful save, the Inquisitor instead takes no damage. This ability is only available if you are using light armor, medium armor, or if you are wearing no armor. At level 14, when you score a critical hit, all damage reduction is ignored. In addition, any regeneration the enemy has will be halted for one round, unless their regeneration always functions. On top of all this, you can select a domain, depending on your chosen deity. As you can see, there is a long list of deities and all of them are tied to at least four domains. No two deities have the exact same list of domains, so there's a ton of flexibility here. Each deity has specific alignment requirements which limit your ability to combine them with certain classes. Once your deity has been selected, you can choose a domain. Most domains will give you one special ability at level 1 and then a more powerful ability at a later level. Inquisitors do not gain additional spells from their domains. If you want to see more information about domain abilities, jump to the domain section of my cleric walkthrough in the chapters below. Finally, let's talk about some mythic options. The mythic ability Everlasting Judgment allows you to use any number of judgments per day. Abundant Bane increases the number of rounds per day you can use Bane by an amount equal to your mythic rank. The Azada Mythic Path Superpower Life Bonding Friendship allows you to choose more teamwork feats and shares their effects with all allies within 50 feet. It will also allow allies to keep fighting even when they have lost enough health that they should be unconscious. The Bane ability you get from the Aeon Mythic Path stacks with the Inquisitor's Bane ability. 
Aeon also has an impressive list of immunities and party-wide buffs provided to the player. I believe Renegade Aeon and Inquisitor meshes very well with Isaac from the Castlevania Netflix series. He serves as a general and inquisitor for Dracula, but also has a strong sense of justice and vigorously fights to restore order. Kineticists are masters of elemental blasts that can alter the battlefield and decimate large groups of enemies. Let me say up front that the mechanics for this class can be confusing, especially if you've never played it before. If it's still confusing after watching this, please just reach out in the comments and myself or someone from the community will answer your questions. The class has an average base attack bonus and blasts are not considered spells, so kineticists are not capable of spell casting. Its class Class skills are mobility, stealth, perception, persuasion, and use magic device. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons and light armor. Kineticists automatically gain an elemental focus, which determines what types of blasts they will have access to, along with providing additional class skills. They will also be able to start using kinetic blasts as a standard action. You must have at least one hand free to aim the blast, and at first it will target a single enemy in close range. Blasts come in different forms. Simple blasts can be either energy or physical blasts. Physical blasts are treated as ranged attacks that target an enemy's armor class and ignore spell resistance. They deal damage equal to 1d6 plus 1 plus your constitution modifier. Energy blasts are ranged touch attacks that must bypass an enemy's spell resistance, target an enemy's touch armor class, and deal damage equal to 1d6 plus half your constitution modifier. In both cases, the damage will increase as you level up. Composite blasts combine elements to form new blasts. At level seven and 15, you will get the ability to select a new elemental focus. You can select the same element you chose at level one to get even more powerful blasts of that type, or you can choose an entirely new element. Either way, a list of composite blasts will be made available to you. Like simple blasts, they are made up of physical and energy blasts, but the damage is significantly increased. Kinetic blasts are treated as weapons in the game, so feats such as point blank shot, precise shot, weapon focus, and improved critical will apply to them. If you are using energy blasts, then spell penetration and greater spell penetration will be essential for your playthrough. Starting at level 2 and every 2 levels afterwards, Kineticists can choose a wild talent. Wild talents are spell-like abilities, which means although they mimic the functionality of spells with similar names, they do not suffer an arcane spell failure chance if you are wearing armor and they cost a standard action to use. The list of what's available changes based upon the element you have selected. A Kineticist uses their constitution modifier for wild talent concentration checks and the difficulty class for any wild talent is 10 plus the wild talent's effective spell level plus your constitution modifier. At level 1, kineticists will be able to choose their first infusion. Infusions alter the manner in which your kinetic blast works. There are two types of infusions. A substance infusion causes an additional effect, while a form infusion causes the kinetic blast to manifest in a different way. When using a kinetic blast, you can apply one form and one substance infusion to make it more powerful. Each infusion comes with a specific burn cost that is added to the overall burn cost required to use the blast. The difficulty class for a save against an infusion is based on the blast effective spell level, not the level of the infusion. The difficulty class for form infusions are calculated using your dexterity modifier, not your constitution modifier. Kineticists also automatically gain the ability to accept burn, which is required for some of your more powerful wild talents. For each point of burn your character takes, you will take one per character level points of non-lethal damage. This damage cannot be healed by any means other than a full rest, which will also clear any burn points you have. The total number of burn points you can have is 3 plus your constitution modifier. At level 3, when accepting burn, you will also gain a bonus on attack rolls with kinetic blasts equal to the total amount of burn points you have. The maximum this bonus can reach is plus 6. You will also receive a bonus to damage rolls equal to double your attack roll bonus. 
At level 6, whenever you have at least 3 points of burn, you gain a plus 2 size bonus to 2 physical ability scores of your choice. You also gain a chance to ignore the effects of a critical hit or sneak attack equal to 5% for every current point of burn. At 11th level, when you have at least 5 points of burn, the size bonus increases to plus 4 on one physical ability score and a plus 2 size bonus on your other 2 physical ability scores. At 16th level, when you have at least 7 points of burn, you gain a plus 6 size bonus on one physical ability score, a plus 4 size bonus to a second physical ability score, and a plus 2 size bonus on the remaining physical ability score. At level 11, when using Gather Power, which we will get into later, as a move or four round action, a kineticist can reduce the total burn cost of a wild talent by an additional point. At level 16, the burn cost of all composite blasts is reduced by one. This cannot reduce the cost of a composite blast below zero. At level 5, kineticists can take on one point of burn to empower their kinetic blast as if using empower spell. At 9th level for 2 points, they can maximize their blast and at level 13 for 3 points, their blast can be quickened. Empower and Maximize will both make your Kinetic Blast do more damage, while Quickened allows you to use your Blast as a swift action instead of a standard action. At level 19, Kineticist can reduce the cost of one of these options by one. Okay, so now that we have finished the rundown, let's look at how all of this works in practice. The first element I chose was Fire, and you'll see here the simple blast that was provided to me based on the element I chose. As the game progressed, I was able to choose different form infusions. Each form infusion changes the nature of my blast, so the simple version basically works like a scorching ray and hits one target at close range. The eruption form infusion will change my simple single target blast into a long range 10 foot burst. The other two forms change my blast into a 15 foot cone or a long range single target ray. In addition to a form infusion, you can also select a substance infusion. Since I chose fire, I have the option of selecting the burning substance infusion, which will literally ignite my foes. If you look down where my simple blast is selected, you will see the number zero in the upper left. That number represents how much burn I take every time I use this blast. At the top of your action bar, you can track how much burn you have already taken and how much total burn your character can endure. So since my burn for this blast is zero, I know I can basically use this an infinite amount of times. As I mentioned before, later in the game, you'll be able to choose a second and third element, which will unlock composite blast. Composite blast basically work like simple blasts, except they do more damage and cost more burn to use. So if I decide to select a magma blast, which has earth and fire elements combined, you'll see it takes one point of burn for me to use it. Mind you, this is a level 19 character, so I have a lot of mechanisms naturally reducing burn that you won't have when you first get composite blast. Anyway, based on this information, I can use this blast 14 times before I need to take a rest, but I want more damage than this. Let's go ahead and also use the empower and maximize metakinesis options, which will raise our burn cost to three. Obviously, I want to use my blast more than four times, so I need to keep all these mechanics, but reduce the burn cost at the same time. To do this, you use Gather Power, which for some reason is barely covered in the class mechanics sheet, but it's absolutely critical to Kineticist. There are three different versions of Gather Power. Gather Power Low lets you use a move action to reduce the burn cost of your blast by one. Remember that blast costs a standard action, so you can do this and still use your blast in the same turn. Gather Power Medium requires you to use a full round action to reduce the burn cost of your blast by two. If the burn cost drops to zero before the whole round is spent, you use your blast immediately. What this means is if the blast you are trying to use has a burn cost that can actually be covered with Gather Power Low, you'll just go ahead and use the blast in the same turn. The game doesn't force you to manually switch to a lower level of Gather Power. Gather Power High requires a full round action and a move action to reduce the burn cost of your blast by three. 
Again, if the burn cost drops to zero before the whole round is spent, you use your blast immediately. Now, keep in mind because I am at a high level, gather power low actually reduces burn cost by three instead of just one. And therefore, when I select it, my burn cost is completely removed. So now I can use an empowered, maximized, and burning composite blast with no burn cost whatsoever. Again, I hope this explains the mechanics for everyone, but if it doesn't, just let me know down below. Finally, let's get into some mythic options. The mythic ability Kinetic Overcharge allows your gather power abilities to reduce an additional point of burn. Overinfused Blast lets you apply two substance infusions to your blast. Ascendant Element will allow blasts with the element of your choice to bypass the energy resistance and immunity of your foes. The Mythic Feed Improved Critical will help your Kinetic Blast do significantly more damage. Lich is the only Mythic path with powers that specifically interact with Kinetic Blast. Magic Devourer will make your Kinetic Blast quickened whenever an enemy fails a check to overcome your spell resistance, and it will give you a spell resistance of 25 plus your Mythic rank. Negative Energy Mastery will allow your Blast to deal an additional 1d6 negative energy damage plus 1 damage per Mythic rank, and it will inflict a negative level on the target. Keep in mind that as a Lich, negative energy is added to the list of ascendant elements you can select to bypass enemy defenses. Also note there's another Lich power called Death of Elements, which converts all elemental damage into negative energy. So you can make your blast do negative energy damage, give them additional damage that debuffs enemies, and make it so this damage cannot be resisted. Gold Dragon provides massive increases to your attribute scores, immunities, and spell damage. Even though blasts are not treated as spells, they will get the same damage increase that spells get from this path. I think this is a great option to play as Avatar Aang, the last airbender, a symbol of light and peace who can control all four elements. Magus Spellcasters fight with a melee weapon in one hand while casting spells in the other hand. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 6, and its casting attribute is Intelligence. Its arcane spells must be prepared in the spellbook prior to being used. Its class skills are Athletics, Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. They are proficient with simple weapons, martial weapons, and light armor. They do not incur a spell failure chance when wearing light armor. If you multi-class, then arcane spells from another class will have the usual spell failure chance even when wearing light armor. The Magus class automatically gains spell combat, which allows you, as a full round action, to make attacks with a light or one-handed weapon while also casting a spell. The casting time of the spell must be a standard action. Your melee and spell attacks during the full round action take a negative two penalty. At level eight, you gain a plus two circumstance bonus to concentration checks while using spell combat. At 14th level, that bonus increases to plus four. At level 19, a Magus can choose six spells from spell level 1 through 6 in the wizard spellbook and place them in their own spellbook. At level 20, the Magus no longer needs to make concentration checks to cast a spell defensively during spell combat. In addition, they can add a bonus to the difficulty class, attack rolls, or spell penetration of a spell used during spell combat. Starting at level 2, whenever the Magus casts a spell, they can make a free melee attack at their highest base attack bonus as part of the casting. If the attack is successful, you'll deal normal weapon damage as well as the effects of your spell. If you make a critical hit, the spell will only deal twice as much damage while the weapon will use its own critical modifier. At level 16, if an enemy casts a defensive spell within reach of you, then that triggers an attack of opportunity for you once the spell is complete. The Magus class also automatically automatically gains an arcane pool, which allows you, as a swift action, to give any weapon a plus one enhancement bonus. This bonus increases up to plus five at level 17, and keep in mind a weapon's maximum enhancement bonus is also five. At fifth level, instead of an enhancement bonus, you can give a weapon certain properties such as flaming, frost, or speed. These properties will consume a portion of the enhancement bonus the ability could have provided you. The feat Extra Arcane Pool gives you two additional points in the pool. At fourth level, a Magus can, as a swift action, sacrifice points from their Arcane Pool to recall a spell that they had already prepared and cast that day. 
The number of points you must sacrifice to do this is equal to the spell's level until your Magus reaches level 11 when you only have to sacrifice points equal to half the spell's level. Starting at third level and every three levels afterwards, the Magus can select a Magus Arcana. These are abilities that use a point from your arcane pool to add on special effects. There are a wide range of possibilities, such as adding an attack bonus based on your intelligence modifier or using a swift action to give yourself haste. At level seven, a Magus gains proficiency with medium armor and can ignore the arcane spell failure chance using this would usually incur. At 13th level, they gain the same proficiency with heavy armor. At level 10, a Magus counts half of their level as a fighter for the purpose of qualifying for feats. If you have levels of fighter, they will stack with this ability. Magus have access to cantrips, which are level zero arcane spells. Cantrips can be casted without consuming a spell slot, which means you can use them an infinite amount of times. At levels five, 11, and 17, the Magus can choose a bonus feat. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Abundant Arcane Pool increases your pool by a number of points equal to your mythic rank. The mythic feat Spell Penetration will add your mythic rank to caster level checks made to overcome spell resistance. Legend will let you stack on another 20 levels of a martial class, significantly raising your base attack bonus, increasing your one-handed melee capabilities, and depending on your class, it could cause your critical hits to automatically be confirmed. The Demon Mythic Path will provide several buffs to help your attacks connect and the best teleportation ability in the game. This path and class combo is a perfect complement to a playthrough as Ra's al Ghul, one of Batman's most famous adversaries. He possesses a limited use of spells and is famous for fighting with a one-handed sword that has his legendary nickname engraved in Arabic script, Head of the Demon. Monks are masters of unarmed combat, allowing you to deliver devastating strikes with unparalleled precision. You must have a lawful alignment to choose Monk. It has a high base attack bonus and is completely unable to cast spells. His class skills are athletics, mobility, stealth, knowledge world, lore, religion, persuasion, and perception. They are proficient with clubs, light and heavy crossbows, daggers, hand axes, javelins, commas, nunchaku, quarter staffs, size, short swords, short spears, short Shuriken, Shanghai, slings, spears, and any weapon with the monk's special weapon quality. When wearing armor, using a shield, or carrying a medium or heavy load, monks lose their armor class bonus, as well as the fast movement and flurry of blows abilities. When unarmored and unencumbered, monks can add their wisdom modifier to their armor class and combat maneuver defense. In addition, the monk gains a plus one bonus to both of these stats at level four and every four levels afterwards. Monks automatically gain the improved unarmed strike feat, which is a prerequisite for many monk feats and allow their unarmed attacks to deal 1d3 bludgeoning damage or 1d2 damage if they are small. This unarmed damage steadily increases as you level up and grows even more if you are able to increase your size. Monks also automatically gain Flurry of Blows, which allows them to make one additional attack at their full base attack bonus when they do a full attack. At level 11, Flurry of Blows provides two additional attacks instead of one, and both of them stack with haste and other effects that provide additional attacks. At level three, Monks gain Key Strike, which causes their unarmed attacks to be treated as magic for the purpose of overcoming damage reduction. At level seven, their unarmed attacks are treated as Cold Iron and Silver for the the same purpose, and at level 10, they are treated as lawful. Finally, at level 16, they are treated as adamantine weapons. At level 3, monks also gain a key pool, which allows them to use key powers that they gain over time. The first power you gain is Extra Strike, which allows you, as a swift action, to expend one key pool point to gain one additional unarmed attack at your full base attack bonus when making a Flurry of Blows attack. This Extra Strike stacks with Haste, Flurry of Blows, and similar effects that would give you additional attacks. At level four and every two levels afterwards, monks are able to choose additional key powers. These powers range from teleportation, to giving your monk bark skin, to even providing a plus 20 insight bonus on their next attack. At level one, monks also pick up the stunning fist feat, which if your attack is successful, forces an enemy to pass a fortitude saving throw or become stunned. The difficulty class for this attack is 10 plus half your character level plus your wisdom modifier. A stunned character drops everything held, cannot take actions, loses their dexterity bonus to armor class, 
and takes a negative two penalty to armor class. At first you can only use this ability once per day, but that amount increases every four levels. Picking up this feat also unlocks three feats that expand Sunny Fist functionality. Two of them focus specifically on the Monk Dragon style. Dragon Ferocity increases your strength bonus on unarmed strike damage rolls. In addition, when you score a critical hit or a successful stunning fist attempt, your enemy will be shaken for a number of rounds equal to 1d4 plus your strength modifier. Dragon War gives you one additional stunning fist attempt and allows you to expend two uses of stunning fist to release a war in a 15 foot cone. Enemies caught in the cone take your unarmed strike damage and must pass a will save or they are shaken for 1d4 rounds. The difficulty check is 10 plus half your character level plus your wisdom modifier. The third feat is Crushing Blow, which allows you to make a stunning fist attempt as part of a full round action. If successful, instead of stunning your target, you reduce the target's armor class by an amount equal to your wisdom modifier for one minute. At level four, you can change Stunning Fist so that it makes enemies fatigued instead of stunned, and at level eight, you could choose to instead make enemies sickened. At level two, you pick up Evasion, which allows monks to take no damage when making a successful reflex save against attacks that normally have the damage upon a successful save. At level nine, they get Improved Evasion, which causes monks to take half damage even on a failed reflex save. At level three, a monk gains a plus 10 enhancement bonus to their base speed, and this increases by 10 every three levels. This bonus is lost if the monk is wearing armor or has the medium or higher load. At fourth level, the monk gains a plus two bonus on saving throws against enchantment spells and effects. At fifth level, they gain immunity to all diseases. At 20th level, the monk gains 10 damage reduction against all sources except chaotic. At level one, level two, and every four levels afterwards, you will be able to pick a monk bonus feat. This list of feats expands as you level up and can suit a variety of monk builds focused on defense, critical hits, combat maneuvers, or a combination of all the above. At fifth level, a monk can learn one type of style strike. Whenever he makes a flurry of blows, he can designate one of his unarmed strikes as a style strike. Every four levels thereafter, he'll be able to learn an additional style strike. At 15th level, he can designate up to two of his unarmed strikes each round as a style strike. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Abundant Key increases your key pool by a number of points equal to your mythic rank. The mythic feat Stunning Fist increases the difficulty class of Stunning Fist by half of your mythic rank. Improved Unarmed Strike adds half your mythic rank to your damage with unarmed strikes. Even though Azada clashes with the monk's alignment, the superpowers Incredible Might and Supersonic Speed both fit in nicely with a monk build. Remember that monks don't lose their abilities when going to a different alignment, so if you multi-class, this might be an option to consider. Gold Dragon is also a fantastic choice for the monk class. The attribute bonuses, immunities, and intense focus on valuing all life fit right in with a monk playstyle. I really like using this combo to play as Dalsum, the famous long arm fighter from the Street Fighter series. He's a pacifist who goes against his beliefs to enter the tournament and raise money for his impoverished village. Of course, if you are interested in a less peaceful version of Gold Dragon, you could always switch over to Liu Kang, who I am sure requires no introduction. Oracles are divine vessels who have been given incredible power whether they wanted this power or not. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 10, and its casting attribute is Charisma. The divine spells can be cast spontaneously, which means the spells do not have to be prepared in the spell book prior to use. His class skills are Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Religion, Lore Nature, and Persuasion. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields except for tower shields. Oracles automatically add the full line of cure or inflict spells into their known spell list. Cure spells are for healing living creatures or damaging undead creatures, while inflict spells have the exact opposite effect. At level one, you choose which spell line you would prefer and the choice cannot be changed afterwards. Oracles also get to choose a mystery, which gives them access to additional class skills, special abilities, and a list of spells. There's a variety to choose from here, such as battle, which focuses on melee combat, or Bones, which delves into necromancy. 
Depending on what mystery you have unlocked, you will also gain access to a list of special abilities called revelations. You can select a revelation on level 1, level 3, and every 4 levels afterwards. As you gain levels, more powerful revelations will be available to you. There's too large a list to cover all the options here, but I will go over a couple of popular ones. If you choose the battle mystery, you can select the war site revelation, which lets you roll twice for initiative, and at level 11, it will let you roll three times. Battle also unlocks Weapon Mastery, which gives you Weapon Focus, Improved Critical at level 8, and Greater Weapon Focus at level 12. The Life Mystery allows you to choose the Channel Revelation, which lets you channel energy to heal party members or damage undead creatures just like a cleric. Finally, if you choose the Nature Mystery, then you can gain access to the Animal Companion Revelation, providing you with a pet. Unfortunately, you only get three options, but many people would say Wolf is the best animal companion anyway. At level 20, Oracles unlock their final revelation, which provides unique bonuses based upon the mystery they selected. For example, at level 20, the battle mystery will give you Pounce, which allows you to do a full attack when successfully hitting with a charge attack. Oracles also have to choose a curse. Each curse comes with a specific benefit as well as a hindrance and they are a lot to choose from. The blackened curse automatically gives you fire spells as you level up, but it also imposes a negative 4 penalty on weapon attack rolls. The powerless prophecy curse causes you to be staggered for the first round of combat. In exchange, you get a plus 4 insight bonus to initiative checks at level 5 and uncanny dodge at level 10. At level 15, for the first round of combat, you'll gain a plus 4 insight bonus to armor class and all saving throws. Another interesting option is Wolf Scarred Face, which gives you a bite attack that gains power over time in exchange for an increase to your spell failure chance. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Second Mystery allows you to choose an additional mystery, giving you access to the appropriate revelations and spells. Beneficial Curse gives you an additional Oracle Curse, but you do not take any of the penalties. The Angel Mythic Path Spellbook can be combined with the Oracle Spellbook to significantly accelerate your spell progression. This path can also increase the amount of healing your Oracle is capable of while providing you with some fantastic buffs and damaging spells. Gold Dragons are also a great choice for Oracles since you gain significant bonuses to your immunities, attribute scores, and spell damage. I think Gold Dragon and Oracle together provide a great opportunity to play as Victor Stone, aka Cyborg. He was mutilated by an alien creature, forcing his father to cover Victor's body in metallic prototype prosthetic parts. Victor is mortified by the change and considers his new body to be a curse regardless of its various abilities. Despite this, he is a regular member of both the Teen Titans and Justice League, putting his life on the line to keep the world safe. Paladins are beacons of righteousness, employing holy magic and extraordinary martial prowess in the battle against evil. On that same token, you must have a deity to choose as class, therefore you cannot be an atheist. Paladins must be lawful good at all times. If they drift into a different alignment, they lose access to their spells and class features. They are also not able to advance in level until the alignment is correct once again. The class has a high base attack bonus, a max spell level of 4, and its casting attribute is Charisma. Its divine spells must be prepared in the spellbook prior to being used. Its class skills are Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Lore Religion, and Persuasion. Paladins come with proficiencies in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, and shields except for tower shields. Paladins automatically gain Smite Evil, which allows them, as a swift action, to add their Charisma bonus to any attack rolls against a particular target. You also add your Paladin level to all damage rolls against that target and the attacks automatically bypass any damage reduction the enemy has. The Paladin also gains a deflection bonus to their armor class equal to their Charisma modifier against any attacks made by the target. Smite Evil only works against enemies that have an evil alignment and it lasts until the end of combat. At first you will only be able to use this ability once per day but as you level up this amount will increase. At level 11, Paladins gain Mark of Justice, which allows you to expend two uses of Smite Evil in exchange for giving its bonuses to the entire team. 
At level 5, paladins can choose a divine bond, which manifests itself in one of two ways. The first option is a divine bond with your weapon, which allows paladins, as a standard action, to give their weapon an enhancement bonus or weapon property, such as flaming, holy, or keen. The second option is to gain an animal pet that will have the same character level as the paladin. Paladin's pet options are only a horse or black horse. At level 2, paladins gain lay on hands, which allows them, as a standard action, to touch a creature in melee range and heal them. If paladins heal themselves, that can be done as a swift action. This ability will heal 1d6 points of damage for every two paladin levels you possess. Paladins can also use this ability a number of times per day equal to half your paladin level plus your charisma modifier. At level 3 and every 3 levels thereafter, Paladins gain a Mercy, which adds an effect to your Lay on Hands ability. In addition to healing the target, you will clear one or multiple statuses based on which Mercies you have selected. At level 4, Paladins get access to Channel Positive Energy. This allows you, as a standard action, to release a 30-foot burst that heals living creatures or damages the undead. The amount of damage dealt or healed is equal to 1d6 points of damage plus 1d6 points of damage for every two paladin levels beyond the first. Creatures harmed by this effect can make a will saving throw to half the damage, difficulty class 10 plus half the paladin level plus the paladin's charisma modifier. Channeling positive energy will consume two uses of your Lay on Hands ability. The selective channel feat helps to ensure you do not accidentally heal enemies or damage your allies when channeling energy. At level 20, paladins heal the maximum amount possible when using Lay on Hands or channeling energy. They also gain 10 points of damage reduction against all sources except evil. At level 3, paladins become immune to fear and give all allies a plus 4 bonus to saving throws against fear effects. At level 8, paladins become immune to charm spells and spell-like effects while also giving allies a plus 4 bonus to saving throws against charm effects. At level 17, paladins become immune to compulsion spells and spell-like abilities while also giving allies a plus 4 bonus to saving throws against compulsion effects. They also gain 5 points of damage reduction against all damage sources except evil. At 14th level, a paladin's weapons are treated as good aligned for the purpose of overcoming damage reduction. In addition, any attack made within 10 feet of them is also treated as good aligned for the purpose of overcoming damage reduction. At level 2, paladins gain a bonus equal to their charisma modifier on all saving throws. At level 3, paladins are immune to all diseases. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Abundant Smite provides you with an increase of smite evil uses equal to half your mythic rank. Since paladins must remain lawful good, Aeon is a complementary option thematically, while mechanically their party-wide buffs dovetail nicely with the auras paladins already have. The other obvious choice here is the Angel Mythic Path, which fits like a glove thematically while helping you hit like a truck, heal more grievous injuries, and provide phenomenal buffs for the entire party. I think this is a great option for a Captain America playthrough, standing up for the people of Galarian by embodying the ideals of truth, justice, and freedom. Rangers hone their melee and ranged combat skills to be absolutely devastating against very specific opponents. The class has a high base attack bonus, a max spell level of 4, and its casting attribute is Wisdom. The divine spells must be prepared in a spellbook prior to being used. Its class skills are Athletics, Stealth, Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Perception, and Persuasion. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields, except for tower shields. Rangers automatically can choose a favorite enemy, gaining a plus two bonus on weapon attack and damage rolls against that group. Some of these categories have additional subtypes you must narrow your choice into, such as demons, which are split into three different options for this mechanic. At fifth level and every five levels afterwards, you will choose another favorite enemy. You will also be able to select a favorite enemy group you've previously chosen and stack an additional plus two bonus on your attack and damage against them. At level 20, Rangers gain Master Hunter, which allows them to, as a standard action, make a full attack against a favorite enemy. That enemy must pass a fortitude save or they will automatically die. The difficulty class is 10 plus half your Ranger level plus your Wisdom modifier. At level 3, the ranger can select their favorite terrain and gain bonuses when he is in this terrain. 
The bonus is a plus two to initiative, lower nature, perception, and stealth. Starting at level 12, rangers can, as a move action, use their stealth skill to hide while in difficult terrain, even during combat. At level 4, rangers gain Hunter's Bond, which lets them choose between two options. The first option lets rangers, as a move action, give half of their favorite enemy bonuses to companions. This bonus lasts a number of rounds equal to the ranger's wisdom modifier. The other option lets them select an animal companion. This companion shares the ranger's favorite enemy and terrain bonuses. The pet will be three levels below your ranger unless you select the boon companion feat to raise their level up to yours. Once you make a choice between these two options, that selection cannot be changed. Rangers are also able to select a combat style at level 2. These styles unlock a list of bonus feats they can choose from at level 2 and every 4 levels afterwards. At level 9 you pick up Evasion, which allows Rangers to take no damage when making a successful reflex save against attacks that normally have the damage upon a successful save. At level 16 you get Improved Evasion, which causes Rangers to take half damage even on a failed reflex save. At level 11, rangers pick up Quarry, which can be used as a standard action to give you a plus 2 insight bonus to attack rolls made against the Quarry target, and all critical hits against the target will automatically be confirmed. At level 19, Quarry can be used as a free action, and the bonus increases to plus 4. At level 3, rangers gain a plus 2 bonus on athletic checks and a plus 4 bonus on fortitude saves against fatigue and exhaustion. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The Trickster Mythic Path can provide you with several feats that make critical hits occur more often and do significantly more damage. I think this is especially strong when paired with a ranger because it's very easy to make a superb two weapon style combatant. Fighting with two weapons will give you more opportunities to critically hit and make full use of what Trickster provides. The menacing combat style can also make full use of the Persuasion Ring 2 Mythic Trick which automatically attempts to demoralize and paralyze enemies at the start of combat. Demon also has many buffs and effects that will help a two weapon style combatant, not to mention the best teleportation ability in the game. I like the thought of using Ranger and Demon to run through the game as Baraka, leader of the Tarkatans, a race of mutants created by crossbreeding demons from different realms. He specializes in hunting down Shao Kahn's enemies, the vast majority of which are human. He's also the owner of a sick set of retractable arm blades, and most importantly, he's Melina's lover. Rogues, specialize in moving unseen and striking opponents when they least expect it. The class has an average base attack bonus and is completely unable to cast spells. Its class skills are athletics, mobility, trickery, stealth, knowledge world, perception, persuasion, and use magic device. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, hand crossbows, rapiers, saps, short swords, short bows, and light armor. Rogues automatically gain the weapon finesse feat, which lets them use a dexterity modifier instead of strength on attack rolls with light weapons, s-stocks, elven curved blades, or rapiers made for their size. They also add half their level to all perception checks. At level 1 and every 2 levels thereafter, rogues gain 1d6 points of sneak attack damage. This damage triggers when rogues successfully attack an enemy that has lost a dexterity bonus to armor class or when the target is flanked. At level 20, each time a rogue deals sneak attack damage, they force an enemy to pass a fortitude save or die. The difficulty class is 10, plus half your rogue level, plus your dexterity modifier. At level 2 and every 2 levels afterwards, rogues can choose from a list of rogue talents. At level 10, a more advanced list of rogue talents is unlocked. There are a wide variety of options to choose from, such as Weakening Wound, which reduces an enemy's damage reduction by your character level when you successfully hit with a sneak attack. Another great option is Opportunist, which allows rogues to perform an attack of opportunity against an enemy that has been damaged in melee by an ally. At level 4, rogues get debilitating injury, which allows them to place a penalty upon enemies they hit with a sneak attack. You can place a penalty on armor class, attack rolls, or the enemy's speed. The rogue talent double debilitation allows you to use two debilitating injuries at once. 
At 3rd, 11th, and 19th levels, the Rogue will gain finesse training for one weapon type. Finesse training allows the Rogue to add their dexterity modifier instead of strength to their damage rolls. At level 2, you pick up Evasion, which allows Rogues to take no damage when making a successful reflex save against attacks that normally have the damage upon a successful save. At level 3 and every 3 levels thereafter, Rogues will pick up Danger Sense. This ability provides a plus 1 bonus to reflex saving throws when avoiding traps and a plus 1 dodge bonus to armor class against attacks from traps. At level 2, they get Uncanny Dodge, which ensures they keep their dexterity bonus to armor class unless they have been completely immobilized or an enemy uses the faint action against them. At level 5, they also gain Improved Uncanny Dodge, which prevents rogues from being flanked. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic feat Mythic Sneak Attacker will give you an additional 1d6 points of sneak attack damage. Azada's chaotic nature is a natural thematic fit with Rogue, while the superpower supersonic speed, incredible might, and life bonding friendship all will help the Rogue significantly. The Trickster Mythic Path can provide you with extra sneak attack damage and several feats that make your critical hits occur more often. If you max out the Athletic skill, Athletic's Rank 3 Mythic Trick will increase your base attack bonus, providing an additional attack, which in turn is an additional opportunity to crit or sneak attack. This path and class combination provides a great opportunity to play as Batman, the world's greatest detective. Bruce Wayne is legendary for the gadgets and tricks he uses to sneak up on enemies and strike when they least expect it. Notorious for keeping detailed files on how to completely destroy even his closest allies, you never can predict what Batman will do next. Shamans draw upon spirits and energy to shape the world and expand the influence of their patrons. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 10, and its casting attribute is Wisdom. Its divine spells must be prepared in a spell book prior to being used. Its class skills are Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Lore Religion, and Persuasion. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, light armor, and medium armor. Shamans automatically gain a spirit that provides them with special abilities, bonus spells, and hexes, which we will cover in a bit. Most of the spirits provide some sort of melee ability at level 1, a defensive ability at level 8, and then an elemental transformation ability at level 16. An exception to this is the nature spirit, which provides an animal companion at level 16. The life spirit allows a shaman to channel positive energy, and the extra channel shaman feet will allow them to do this more often. Shamans also get to choose a spirit animal. Each option will provide one bonus to a specific skill and one other type Type of bonus. A popular choice here is the Hair Familiar, which provides a plus 4 bonus on initiative checks and a plus 2 bonus on perception checks. Starting at 4th level, shamans are able to form a temporary bomb with a second spirit. This will give them the spells and abilities of that spirit, but they will not gain the hexes. At level 2 and several levels thereafter, shamans can learn a hex. Hexes are magical tricks that can be used with a standard action to debuff enemies or buff allies. There are several different options here, but I will review a couple of popular ones. Evil Eye will place a debuff on enemies that gets more powerful as you level up. Unless the foe is immune to mind affecting effects, this ability will debuff them for at least one round. Battlemaster will provide you with an extra attack of opportunity, weapon specialization at level 8, and greater weapon focus at level 16. Ice Plant will provide a plus 2 bonus to armor class. Some hexes are only available based upon the spirit you have chosen. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Second Spirit allows you to select one additional spirit. The Angel Mythic Path Spellbook can be combined with the Shaman Spellbook to significantly accelerate your spell progression. In addition, the Angelic Halo has the Piercing Rays upgrade that reduces enemies' will saves, making your debuffing hexes more likely to connect. Swarm That Walks will provide significant increases to your immunities and attribute scores. It will also equip you with physical swarm attacks that are devastating to large numbers of enemies. I think this is great for a character like Jack Torrance from The Shining, who hears the voices of spirits that slowly drive him into madness and compel him to kill his own family so that the spirits can devour their spiritual energy. Skulls, use songs to drive allies into a frenzied battle rage, 
that terrifies opponents. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 6, and its casting attribute is Charisma. They can cast their arcane spells spontaneously, which means their spells do not have to be prepared in the spell book prior to use. His class skills are Athletics, Mobility, Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Lore Religion, Perception, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields except tower shields. A skull can cast spells from his spellbook while wearing light armor, medium armor, and or holding a shield. Heavy armor will still cause your scald spells to fail, and if you multi-class, then arcane spells from another class will have the usual failure chance, even when wearing light or medium armor. Scalds automatically gain Inspired Rage, which provides allies with a plus one bonus to attack rolls, damage rolls, and will saving throws. These bonuses increase as the scald levels up. This ability also imposes a negative one penalty to armor class. While under this effect, allies cannot use any ability that requires concentration. At level 20, this ability no longer gives allies a penalty to armor class, and it does not prevent them from using abilities that require concentration. Allies are treated as if they are hasted while under this effect. At level 3 and every 3 levels thereafter, Skulls get to choose a Rage Power. Rage Powers are additional buffs or effects that only activate while your character is in a rage. Many of the options here are mutually exclusive, which creates a lot of variety in what type of Skull you build. At level 6, Skulls gain Song of Strength, which causes all allies within 50 feet to add half the Skulls level to all strength based skill checks. At level 10, they gain Dirge of Doom, which causes all enemies within 50 feet to become shaken for as long as this performance continues. This is a sonic mind affecting fear effect. At 14th level, the Skulls gain a song that can revive allies who are within 50 feet. These allies are alive but staggered. Every round that the Skull continues this song, the allies will stay alive, but they automatically die at the end of the song or if you are interrupted. The lingering performance feat allows your buffs and debuffs to continue for two rounds after you stop performing. At level 7, raging songs can be started with a move action instead of a standard action. At level 13, they can be started with a swift action. At second level and every five levels thereafter, Skulls can choose a Skull Talent, which is essentially a reduced list of rogue talents. There are a wide variety of talents to choose from, such as combat feats, which allow you to take an additional feat, or improved evasion, which lets you take no damage on a successful reflex saving throw. At level 4, Skulls get Uncanny Dodge, which ensures they keep their Dexterity bonus to armor class unless they have been completely immobilized or an enemy uses the faint action against them. At level 8, they also gain Improved Uncanny Dodge, which prevents Skulls from being flanked. Skulls automatically gain the ability to scribe scrolls while camping, and they add half their class level on all knowledge and lore skill checks. They also gain a bonus feat from a limited list of feats. At level 2, Skulls gain a plus 4 bonus to saving throws against bardic performances and sonic effects. Starting at 7th level, Skulls can automatically take a 10 on all knowledge skill checks for skills they have ranks in. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. Obviously, Scald has strong synergy with Azada Mythic Path, which provides several additional songs you could potentially utilize in combat. The superpower All Skilled perfectly complements the Scald's large list of class skills. Azada also provides access to strong enchantment spells like Insanity and Hold Person Mask, which complement the Scald spellbook. Aeon's immunities, buffing spells, and various party-wide gazes also complement the Scald very well. I know it's not a perfect fit, but I love this combo for a Wolverine playthrough. While Wolverine is more of a foot soldier in early versions of the X-Men team, over time he becomes the leader of a new generation of mutants. Not only do these children depend on him for training and guidance, but in combat, his berserker rage gives all of them confidence there's no fight they can't win. Slayers stalk and study prey before moving in to dismember their foes. The class has a high base attack bonus and is completely unable to cast spells. His class skills are Athletics, Mobility, Stealth, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Perception, and Persuasion. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields except for tower shields. Slayers automatically get Studied Target, which allows them, as a move action, to gain a 
plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls against an opponent. The difficulty class of their abilities also increases by one. Hitting an opponent with a sneak attack also causes these bonuses to trigger, and the bonuses increase as you level up. At level 7, you can study a target with a swift action. At level 20, Slayers can, as a standard action, make a single attack that forces an enemy to pass a fortitude saving throw or die. The difficulty class for this ability is 10 plus half the Slayer's level plus the Slayer's intelligence modifier. At level 2 and every 2 levels thereafter, Slayers can choose from a list of Slayer talents, which is a slightly modified list of Rogue talents. At level 10, a more advanced list of Slayer talents is unlocked. There are a wide variety of options to choose from, such as Weakening Wound, which reduces an enemy's damage reduction by your character level when you successfully hit with a sneak attack. Another great option is Opportunist, which allows Slayers to perform an attack of opportunity against an enemy that has been damaged in melee by an ally. Starting at level 3 and every 3 levels thereafter, Slayers automatically gain 1d6 points of sneak attack damage. This damage triggers when they successfully attack an enemy that has lost a dexterity bonus to armor class or when the target is flanked. Please note this class does not get 10 ranks of sneak attack damage like a rogue. To compensate for that, you can take the accomplished sneak attacker feat, which will give you some additional sneak attack damage. At level 14, Slayers pick up Quarry, which can be used as a standard action to give you a plus 2 insight bonus to attack rolls made against the Quarry target, and all critical hits against the target will automatically be confirmed. At level 19, Quarry can be used as a free action and the bonus increases to plus 4. At level 13, Slayers can, once per day, increase their movement speed by 30 feet and their movement doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity. At level 17, they can do this twice per day. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Defensive Study will modify your study target ability to provide a bonus to armor class equal to the bonus you get for attack rolls. The mythic feat Mythic Sneak Attacker will give you an additional 1d6 points of sneak attack damage. Swarm That Walks is a great complement to Slayer thematically, while mechanically it's going to give you access to a lot of great damaging spells while also letting you clone your build several times over to create even more havoc on the battlefield. Legend is also a fantastic choice, giving you options like picking up a greatsword and combining Slayer with 20 levels of Rowdy to become Conan the Barbarian. Sorcerers carry a birthright in their blood that manifests in powerful abilities and devastating spells. The class has a low base attack bonus, a max spell level of 10, and its casting attribute is Charisma. They can cast their arcane spells spontaneously, which means their spells do not have to be prepared in the spellbook prior to use. The class skills are Knowledge Arcana, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. Sorcerers only come with proficiency in simple weapons. Sorcerers get access to bloodlines, which provide unique abilities, resistances, and spells. There's a long list with plenty of great options, but we'll only review a couple here. At level 1, the Abyssal Bloodline will provide two additional claw attacks, and they are treated as magic weapons starting at level 5. At 7th level, their damage increases to 1d6 or 1d4 if you are small. And then at level 11, they become flaming weapons that deal an additional 1d6 fire damage. You'll gain resistance to electricity and poison damage until level 20 when you become completely immune to that damage. As you level up, the bloodline will also provide an assortment of spells that revolve around melee combat, such as bull strength and stone skin. At level 1, the infernal bloodline increases the difficulty class of your charm spells by plus 2. You'll gain resistance to fire and poison damage until level 20 when you become completely immune to that damage. At level 15, you gain wings that provide a plus plus three dodge bonus to your armor class. As you level up, the bloodline will also provide an assortment of spells that revolve around fire and enchantment effects, such as mind fog and power word stun. Sorcerers automatically get a sorcerer bonus feat, which lets you choose from a list of feats centered around making you a better spellcaster. At level 7 and every 6 levels thereafter, you can choose from a list of bloodline feats. The list varies based on which bloodline you have chosen. Sorcerers also have access to cantrips, which are level 0 arcane spells. Cantrips can be cast without consuming a spell slot, which means you can use them an infinite amount of times. The spell penetration and greater spell penetration feats will significantly help 
you punch through enemy magical defenses. Spell focus and greater spell focus will increase the difficulty class of your spells in a specific school of magic. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Abundant Casting and its upgrades will increase the amount of castings you have of all your spells. The mythic feat Spell Penetration will add half your mythic rank to caster level checks made to overcome spell resistance. Expanded Arsenal will let you add all your appropriate feats and mythic feats to another school of magic. Spell Focus will increase the difficulty class bonus from the Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus feats by one. Sorcerer's Reflex allows you to cast your first spell at their initiative is rolled as a swift action, as long as it is spell level 1 or at least 2 levels lower than the maximum spell level you can cast. Sorcerers can combine their spell books with the Lich Mythic Path, significantly accelerating your spell level progression. Also, once you become a full Lich, Charisma is the stat that governs health, which is very advantageous when combining it with a Sorcerer. Also keep in mind, spells that are unique to the Lich spell book automatically bypass spell resistance. If you can stomach not punch it through enemy spell resistance until Act 3, this saves you a couple of feats, and potentially a mythic feat as well. Choosing Lich also works very well thematically when combined with the Undead Sorcerer Bloodline. The Azada Mythic Path is also a strong choice due to the superpower Zippy Magic. This will cause all of your single target spells to hit two targets, while also causing them to do more damage. Favorable Magic will let you roll twice to overcome spell resistance and decrease how effectively enemies can limit your area of effect damage. This path opens up great options like playing as Storm, a leader of the X-Men and one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe. My build for her character is linked in the description below. Quick note before we move to the last three classes. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you subscribing and hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my videos spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. War priest, call upon the power of the gods to stand on the front lines against their deity's enemies. On that same token, you must have a deity to choose this class, therefore you cannot be an atheist. The class has an average base attack bonus, a max spell level of 6, and its casting attribute is Wisdom. The divine spells must be prepared in the spell book prior to being used. The class skills are Athletics, Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Religion, and Persuasion. The class comes with proficiency in simple weapons, martial weapons, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, and shields except for tower shields. War War Priest automatically gets Sacred Weapon, which allows your damage with a specific weapon to be based on your level, not the weapon's base damage. This ability can be used with your deity's favorite weapon or any weapon that you select with the weapon focus feat. You can toggle this ability off to use your weapon's base damage instead. At level 4, War Priest can, as a swift action, give their Sacred Weapons a plus 1 enhancement bonus that increases up to plus 5 as you level up. They can choose to use part of this bonus to imbue the weapon with a special ability, such as Keen, Flaming, or Shock. War Priests also automatically get to choose two blessings, which are like cleric domains, except the abilities are different and they do not provide additional spells. Your deity choice decides which blessings are available to you. For example, if you chose Gorum as your deity, you can select the Destruction Blessing. This will let you place a morale bonus on an ally's weapon equal to half your level. At level 10, you can give allies a plus 4 insight bonus to attack rolls made to confirm critical hits, and they will have a 50% chance to treat any sneak attack or critical hit as a normal hit. Another deity option is Serenre, who can give you the Healing Blessing. This will let you, as a swift action, cast Cure Spells as Empowered, causing them to heal 50% more damage. At 10th level, you can touch an ally to grant them Fast Healing 3 for 1 minute. War Priests can spontaneously cast Cure or Inflict Spells by expending one of their prepared spell slots. Cure spells are for healing living creatures or damaging undead creatures, while inflict spells have the exact opposite effect. At level 1, you choose which option you will prefer, and the choice cannot be changed afterwards. At level 2, War Priests gain Fervor, which, as a standard action, allows them to heal an ally or heal themselves with a swift action. Whether this power heals or damages living creatures depends on your alignment and whether you choose to spontaneously cast, cure, or inflict spells. 
The healing or damage will be 1d6 points plus an additional 1d6 points for every three War Priest levels above the second. You can also use this ability to cast any spell with the target of personal as a swift action. This power can be used a number of times per day, equal to half your War Priest level plus your Wisdom modifier. At level 4, War Priests gain access to channel energy. This allows you, as a standard action, to release a 30-foot burst that either damages or heals creatures depending on if they are living or dead. In addition to costing a standard action, this will consume two of your fervor uses. Whether this power heals or damages living creatures depends on your alignment and whether you choose to spontaneously cast, cure, or inflict spells. The amount of damage dealt or healed is equal to what is listed in fervor. Creatures harmed by this effect can make a will saving throw to half the damage with the difficulty class being 10 plus half the War Priest level plus the War Priest Wisdom modifier. The selective channel feat helps to ensure you do not accidentally heal enemies or damage your allies with this ability. At 7th level, the War Priest gains Sacred Armor, which allows you, as a swift action, to give your armor a plus 1 enhancement bonus. This bonus increases to plus 5 over time. You can also sacrifice part of this bonus to add special abilities to your armor, such as Energy Resistance or Spell Resistance. At level 3 and every 3 levels thereafter, War Priest can pick a bonus combat feat. This is a condensed list of feats that focus on your martial abilities. At level 20, War Priest can, for 1 minute, as a a swift action, treat their level as their base attack bonus, gain damage resistance 10 flat, move at full speed regardless of their armor, and all blessing abilities used during this time do not count towards your daily limit. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic feat Mythic Channeling increases the damage you heal or deal when channeling energy by an amount equal to twice your charisma bonus. The Angel Mythic Path will help the War Priest heal more and deal significantly more damage. The party-wide buffs and damaging spells will be very welcomed as well. The AI Mythic Path also fits in well, and its immunities, illusion breaking abilities, and party-wide buffs will certainly help your War Priest. Personally, I like the idea of taking this path and class combo, and then making sure I take the Unquenchable Fire Callistria as my deity. This combination recreates Durance from Pillars of Eternity, a foul-mouthed priest of war who attempts to restore order with brutality and bloodshed. Witches gain incredible magical abilities from a pact made with an otherworldly power. There is no gender requirement to play as a witch. The class has a low base attack bonus, a max spell level of 10, and its casting attribute is intelligence. Their arcane spells must be prepared in the spell book prior to being used. His class skills are Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Persuasion, and Use Magic Device. This class only comes with proficiency in simple weapons. Witches automatically gain a patron, which will provide them with a unique list of additional spells. These spells are slowly given to you as you level up. Some examples of this are Deception, which focuses on providing spells from the Illusion School of Magic, or Insanity, which focuses on enchantment spells. At first level, second level, and every two levels thereafter, witches can learn a Hex. Hexes are magical tricks that can be used with a standard action to debuff enemies or buff allies. There are several different options here, but I will review a couple of popular ones. Evil Eye will place a debuff on enemies that gets more powerful as you level up. Unless the foe is immune to mind affecting effects, this ability will debuff them for at least one round. The difficulty class to resist a Hex is 10 plus half the witch's level plus the witch's intelligence modifier. Battlemaster will provide you with an extra attack of opportunity, weapon specialization at level 8, and greater weapon focus at level 16. Ice Plant will provide a plus 2 bonus to armor class. At level 10 and level 18, the list of available hexes is expanded. Witches also get to choose an animal familiar. Most of these options will provide one bonus to a specific skill and one other type of bonus. A popular choice here is the Hair Familiar, which provides a plus 4 bonus on initiative checks and a plus 2 bonus on perception checks. The Spell Penetration and Greater Spell Penetration feats will significantly help you punch through enemy magical defense. Defenses. Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus will increase the difficulty class of your spells in a specific school of magic. 
Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Abundant Casting and its upgrades will increase the amount of castings you have of all your spells. The mythic feat Spell Penetration will add half your mythic rank to castle level checks made to overcome spell resistance. Expanded Arsenal will let you add all feats and mythic feats to another school of magic. Spell Focus will increase the difficulty class bonus from the Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus regular feats by one. Sorcerer's Reflex allows you to cast your first spell after initiative is rolled as a swift action, as long as it is a spell level 1 or at least 2 levels lower than the maximum spell level you can cast. Witches can combine their spell books with the Lich Mythic Path, significantly accelerating your spell level progression. Also keep in mind, spells that are unique to the Lich spell book automatically bypass spell resistance. If you can stomach not punch it through enemy spell resistance until Act 3, this saves you a couple of feats and potentially a mythic feat as well. Devil also works well, allowing you to keep some of the amazing Azada superpowers such as Zippy Magic and Favorable Magic. The Winter Patron, combined with Asmodeus as your deity, is the perfect combination to recreate a young Emma Frost. While she has been redeemed and is the leader of the X-Men now, there was a time when she was the White Queen of the Hellfire Club. Wizards, research schools of magic to become exceptionally skilled with specific types of spells. The class has a low base attack bonus, a max spell level of 10, and its casting attribute is intelligence. The arcane spells must be prepared in the spell book prior to being used. Its class skills are Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, and Lore Religion. The class comes with proficiency in clubs, daggers, heavy and light crossbows, and quarterstaffs. Armor can cause their spells to fail. Wizards automatically choose a specialist school which decides the type of spells they will specialize in. Once the choice is made, it cannot be changed. All schools of magic are listed and each one will provide you with special abilities. In addition, wizards receive extra slots in their spellbook that can only be filled with spells from their specialist school. Wizards also get to choose an arcane bond with an object or creature. Most of the creature options will provide one bonus to a specific skill and one other type of bonus. A popular choice here is the Hair Familiar, which provides a plus four bonus on initiative checks and a plus two bonus on perception checks. The object bond allows you, once per day, to regain a spell slot that has been used. At level one, level five, and every five levels thereafter, wizards can choose a wizard bonus feat. These feats focus on making you a more competent spellcaster. Wizards have access to cantrips, which are level 0 arcane spells. Cantrips can be casted without consuming a spell slot, which means you can use them an infinite amount of times. They also automatically gain the ability to scribe scrolls while camping. The spell penetration and greater spell penetration feats will significantly help you punch through enemy magical defenses. Spell focus and greater spell focus will increase the difficulty class of your spells in a specific school of magic. Finally, let's go over some mythic options. The mythic ability Abundant Casting and its upgrades will increase the amount of casts you have of all your spells. The mythic feat Spell Penetration will add half your mythic rank to cast a level checks made to overcome spell resistance. Spell Focus will increase the difficulty class bonus from the Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus regular feats by one. Sorcerer's Reflex allows you to cast your first spell after initiative is rolled as a swift action, as long as it is spell level 1 or at least 2 levels lower than the maximum spell level you can cast. The Azada Mythic Path is a strong choice due to the superpower Zippy Magic. This will cause all of your single target spells to hit two targets while also causing them to do more damage. Favorable Magic will also let you roll twice to overcome spell resistance and decreases how effectively enemies can limit your area of effect damage. Wizards can combine their spell books with the Lich Mythic Path, significantly accelerating your spell level progression. Also keep in mind, spells that are unique to the Lich spell book automatically bypass spell resistance. If you can stomach not punch it through enemy spell resistance until Act 3, this saves you a couple of feats and potentially a mythic feat as well. I like taking this path as a wizard and combining it with the necromancy specialist school. This lets me recreate Voldemort, the dreaded evil wizard desperately searching for immortality. That finally completes the full list of base classes in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. I'm more than a little burnt out after putting all of this together, so I'm not certain how quickly we'll start up the ranking series for all the classes, but if it's not next week, more than likely it'll be the week after at the very latest. So 
Looking forward to that dialogue and looking forward to your feedback on this. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.